I agree since 48 that Jews will be part of this country. But they till now refuse to accept us as citizens here in our land. The tragedy of Hassan Azli's life has been the death of his son Azil, aged 17. Azil was shot dead by Israeli police last October. Another mockery of fate for Azil, a bright lad who spoke Arabic, Hebrew and English fluently, believed in the need to bridge the gap between Israel's Jews and Arabs. He was a young Muslim with Christian and Jewish friends, a computer freak and an active member of Seeds for Peace, an American group campaigning for peace between nations. He'd twice been to their summer camps in the United States. Azil's mother rolled up at the shop with fresh coffee for her husband. She too has been shattered by the loss of her son and the circumstances of his death. They're a talented family. Jamili Asli is a school teacher. Her eldest daughter, Nardine, studies medicine in Jerusalem. They see Azil as a martyr, but grieve for him as a family. Azil, for me, is a burmuz for everything good in life, for everything human, for all the mafahim and the qiyam that are present in the best thing in the world, that I dream of. And by the death of Azil, قتل كل شيء حلو بحياتي وبحيات بتصور الناس اللي بيحلون هاي الأشياء كل شيء حلو أسيل كان يرمز إلي. A short walk away from the town, overshadowed by Arabi's sewage farm and rubbish tip, distinctly unsalubrious, is the olive grove where Azil Azli was killed. His father and sister took me to see it. Azil died on October the second, a Monday. Israeli Arabs had taken to the streets, a rare event indeed, demonstrating and rioting in areas where they lived in sympathy with the Palestinian uprising in the West Bank and Gaza, provoked by the visit four days earlier of Israel's General Sharon to Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque. Israeli police shot dead 12 of them, not with rubber bullets here, but with live ammunition, a unique event. This was Israel, not the West Bank. Such lethal crowd control was usually reserved for the occupied territories. Azil Azli was among the victims. He wasn't even demonstrating, just observing, as was his way. It's not easy to visit this place. For me, to live the incident again from the beginning to see soldiers attacking your son and shooting him for no reason, just for being Arab. They may have looked like soldiers yeah. and acted like soldiers, but they were police. One of them shot Azil in the neck at close quarters, almost execution style. Ten months on, he is still unidentified, the policeman who killed this young Israeli citizen. It's very difficult for me, to, for me to imagine and to walk a sealed last steps when he was running down to the olive grove and, and to the place that he was shot. I got there. I got there the second day after he was shot and I collected, I collected the rocks with his blood and those were the only evidence of him being shot there. At Asil's old school, we found some of the lads at play. All in all, the school looked pretty scruffy. Nadine recalled with some resentment its over-large classes, its Jewish-oriented curriculum, and the chronic lack of funding, symbolic of nationwide discrimination against a community denied basic rights in education, housing, employment, and land ownership. How Israeli, I wondered, did she feel herself to be? Less and less with time. Less and less with time. When I was young and I was innocent, and they asked me, where are you from? I used to say, Israel. But then I grew up, and I, I got to know that Israel is just borders that are set around the place that I live in. I don't feel Israeli in any way, especially after my brother was killed. How can I feel belonging to a country that killed my brother? Sitting in Jerusalem at Israel's Supreme Court, a three-man tribunal, the Or Commission, 
is investigating the October killings whose effect on Israeli Arabs has been profound. Police have given evidence, changed their stories, even been found to have lied, whilst relatives of the dead watched from behind a glass screen. Police witnesses, too, have testified to using live ammunition as well as rubber bullets against demonstrators, something they would never have done in a Jewish riot. Ori Nier, who is himself Jewish, reports the Orr Commission for his daily newspaper, Haaretz. Unhappily for him, he has lost faith in its proceedings. I'm somewhat disillusioned, both me and them. I just thought that this would be an extremely important exercise in Israeli democracy, in Israeli citizenhood, um, Israeli justice, and in um, uh, the makeup of Israeli society and in, in sort of mending the, 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 the fences and, and, and um, healing the wounds within the society. I don't see this happening now. Nobody now, least of all the Asli family, believes that the policeman who shot Azil is going to be indicted. There was no autopsy, no proper investigation. The Orr Commission has serious limitations. From the very beginning, Israel's Arab minority has posed a challenge to the Jewish state, not in physical or military form, a challenge rather to its honesty, decency, and sense of fair play. And the sad truth is that all have been lacking where Israel's Arabs are concerned. They have been subjected to long-standing and deep-seated discrimination. The lid of their frustrations finally blew off last October. Israel's Arabs erupted. The Orr Commission, which meets here, is examining that record. Whether its eventual findings will succeed in improving the lot of Israel's Arabs in the long run is very much an open question. And if they fail, there are dangers, real dangers, lurking around the corner. Azmi Bishara is an Arab MK, a member of the Knesset, Israel's parliament who's been berated by Jewish right-wingers as a fifth columnist for calling on Arabs to resist the Sharon government. His criticisms of the state are blunt. It plans for Jews, it builds for Jews, it's supposed to absorb Jews and to look for the welfare and security of the Jews. The Arabs in Israel are either, in the best case, tolerated guests or untolerated guests. So what, what's the future? Concerning the future in the, uh, in the short run, I'm very pessimistic. I, what I uh, see in, in Israel, what I witness, is a, a spread of, uh, uh, of a political culture of apartheid. Probably Israel, constitutionally, is not an apartheid state. I mean, the Arabs can vote. But it's a separation system in every single dimension of life. Danny Nave is a minister without portfolio working in General Sharon's office. When a young border policewoman was shot in the face recently whilst patrolling the West Bank, he called to comfort her, just part of his job as he sees it. But what of those other shootings, the shootings back in October that killed Azil and 11 other Israeli Arabs? The most important thing here is really to try to understand the atmosphere that uh, were at that time. And it was the beginning of the Palestinian violence and terrorism uprising in September. And we found ourselves in a situation that there are Israeli Arabs that are taking part in those kind of, of incidents and uh, violent uh, demonstrations. And the police force people were not in easy case and were not in easy position at that time. So sometimes it's very hard to judge the policeman on the spot and the way he behaves when he feels that he is under threat and maybe a threat to his life. What do you see longer term when you look at the, at the future? I believe it depends mainly on the direction that their leadership will take them because we had many cases, many negative cases recently of representatives of the Arabs in Israel that really crossed the line. Of course, the line with respect to things that they have done in support of Hezbollah or Hamas or other enemies of the state of Israel. Back in Arabe, Nardin Asli and her family have turned Azil's bedroom into a shrine. All his possessions are there. 
These are all his things. This is his best perfume. I got him this one for his last birthday. He was begging me for it for about a year. This is his school bag, which is, it still has the same books that were there the day he, the day he died. Nadine then packed her bag for a trip to Ramallah in the West Bank to visit some of her brother's peace-oriented Palestinian friends to discuss his death with them. And she herself feels the Palestinian bond growing apace. For the first time, we totally feel on the same side. We are Palestinians in 100%. Uh, it's not that they doubt it, for a second, but this time there's something that unites us. We have a martyr in our house, and the Palestinian nation is almost all of it is mo our martyrs. So this time we have some kind of a connection, a unite, a blood thing between us. Israel's Arabs are undergoing a crisis of identity, a crisis accelerated by the events of Black October. They remain citizens of Israel, but lack faith in its institutions. Radicalization of their young would bode ill for the future. Long term, countries can pay dearly for ill treatment of minorities. Just think of the Basques or of Northern Ireland. And that was David Sells reporting from the Galilee on Israel's Arab community.